So welcome to the Barge Canal, the Pine Street Barge Canal. My name's Ruby Perry. I'm with the Friends of the Barge Canal. This is our third annual Green Up Day here. Um, and we're cleaning up the Barge Canal. And you can see way back behind me, there's a crew back there. We've just finished with a crew in the center of the, uh, of the woods here. And we'll be moving on in that direction. So I think what I want, what's important to tell you, let's look around here because um, get, a, get a little oriented here. There's all of these barrels, black barrels. And what that is, is um, the, this is a super fun site. The EPA and uh, the department, the Vermont department is in charge of everything that happens on this uh, land. And those barrels, are the dirt that comes out of uh, the test sites that they are doing. So they're constantly digging down in these small um, circular ways to test the soil to see how far the contaminants have moved and to be sure that they are not moving toward the lake. That, I think, is the primary focus of keeping track of this land. There's no work being done to actually remediate it. What the EPA thinks of as remediation is digging it up and sending it to Coventry. Um, but remediation, nevertheless, is happening. And when you look around here, this is a 28-acre site, it's wild. There's trees, there's, there's a lot of different wildlife that uh, moves through here. It's right on the edge of the lake. You can see the train tracks back there. Um, and you can see Amtrak go by at 10 minutes after 10 every day. So it's important. We're right, we're in a wetland area. We are, um, we're the place where all of the storm water comes before it moves into the lake. So it's pretty important, the work that this uh, land is doing. Um, because it is remediating it. The trees, the, uh, what's in the soil, the, um, all of the biology in the soil, the, all of the mycology in the soil is actually remediating it. They have, it has contained it. It hasn't gotten rid of it. You cannot get rid of these materials. There's 56 contaminants of concern. There's no getting rid of it in, that is known right now, but there are a lot of different studies to use biology, um, the living, the life on the planet to, to actually remediate it. But that's not being done here, though there have been many proposals. But what we are grateful for is how much these trees and this land that has been left alone for 30 years has done to protect our water supply, to protect the lake. And what uh, it has done is contain it so it's not moving into the lake. So it's not sinking into the groundwater, which would be disastrous for every resident in, in the city. Hello, um, my name is Marcy Cass, and I am here on Green Up Day. I'm so happy to be here. And I came from my town of Williston, which is also having a Green Up Day. But I said, sorry, got to go to the Barge Canal um, for the third annual Green Up Day cleanup. Um, I uh, made this map uh, for my friend Ruby Nandy, who asked me to do it. And um, <clears throat> we wanted something um, for so people could orient themselves to the place, but it's kind of unofficial. Um, um, but it, but it's something that shows that there's a lot of personality to, um, to this land. And, um, I had a good time adding a bike rider on the bike path and a beaver. Um, um, and there's the EPA huts. And I think, um, the beauty of cleaning up this land is that it's so interesting the fact that it's um it's a healing super fun site and um the hope is to leave it alone so that it can heal itself more and more and be uh 
and be helpful in so many ways that we don't, uh, you know, um, like you can't, you can't buy anything on it, but um, it filters the water for a large part of Burlington and it's home to so many, uh, so much wildlife. Um, and you know, when we clean up, there's a lot of uh, detritus from homeless people, which is is um, kind of bearing witness to something that um, we kind of have mixed feelings about, because in some cases they're very nice tents and they look like they're comfortable dwellings, but in the end. Um, we need to be here for the land and to take care of it. And, uh, and I'm happy to be part of this lovely group of people that comes and um, participates in cleaning it up. The Friends of the Barge Canal came into existence in order to um, protect this land. And what we're asking for is that, the, that it be conserved. Um, in perpetuity so that it as a wild place not as a, a park because as as I've mentioned many times before the wildness of the place is what is saving the the land it is what's containing the contaminants but 453 what we're here in front of us uh, is about to get permits for doing for building a Nordic spa and the entire four acre parcel that is in front of us will be developed for that spa and um, will go through the permitting process starting sometime uh, along in the fall. The, the adjoining parcel 501 is owned by the same people and she has agreed to give that, to donate that piece of land, that four acre parcel, to the city and it will join the, the land that the is already owned by the city all of this is already owned and that's what we're working for it's 24 acres um, that we're working the city already owns this land here these two parcels in the front are privately owned and those are what are what are being sold this one will be developed uh, this one they are donating to the city should the city but the city has yet to say yes to accepting it and so this will become conserved land is that's what we're hoping and working towards and that's our that's our goal you can see back here um, the barge canal and hopefully we'll have a chance to walk along there that's the original place where the barges came in and this is not the time probably to tell you the whole history of that but over here is the turning basin which you might have heard about and that's where there's quite a bit going on the farmers market is is over in that area the Maltex buildings here just so that you get a sense of where we are um, on on Pine Street it's a uh, hot part of town it's uh, there's a lot happening people say but we need housing why aren't we building housing and there are two things that the EPA prohibits on this land. One of them is housing, and one of them is child care centers. And the reason they prohibit it is because it's too dangerous. The land is contaminated land. And um, we're glad that that is um, specifically prevented um, at this point. Anyway, that's what's been, um, been the case so far. So far. So um, what are we cleaning up here? So the first year we did it, three. this is our third time. The first year we came and we cleaned up, I think it was a total of three tons of trash. And that was uh, decades of encampments. And that the city, nothing had been done. They had just been gathered there um, over the years people would come they'd live there for as long as they could and then they would leave it's a difficult place to live 
um, especially it's a lowland it's a wetland when it rains it gets wet and the mosquitoes also love to be here and most people who have nowhere else to go also don't know how to live outside in the rough it takes some skill we've had a couple of camp of encampments where and we and it's on the map Tom's place Tom lived here for two years um, he knew how to live outside he kept his tent he put a reinforcement on it so he withstood 50 mile an hour winds oh. last year and he was living there. Mm -hmm. He finally got housed and is happily. I have a fantasy that maybe he would do, we could pay him to teach people how to live outside. But mm -hmm. that's a fantasy. Mm -hmm. So when we come in here and we remove tents, as Marcy I think has been talking about, these are not tents that people are living in. These are tents that have gotten abandoned. And the way we know they're abandoned is they're all opened up. The animals have come and taken what they wanted. Other people looking for to find something of use have have uh, taken what they can and and you know brought it to their own use, dried it out. So what we haul out are the abandoned ones. Um, we have nothing to to do with people um, who are trying to live here. We don't, we don't tell them they can't live here. We don't tell them they have to leave uh, under any reason. We don't have that authority. That's not our job. We're here to take care of the land. So when there's trash, we pick it up and we do a number of other things. But just to clarify that we're our, our, our work with cleaning up trash are abandoning the campments.